Hey, hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are tuning in from or if you are catching us on replay. This is The Awesome Journey, and I am your host, Kelly Steinica, along with my co-hosting here, Christy Howard. And we're just two girls that connected on LinkedIn 15 years ago, live on opposite sides of the country, have a giving hearts a passion for paying it forward, and I may have prayed to be living louder in my purpose. And now here we sit in front of microphones bringing you The Awesome Journey. And one of the things that I think many of you who have been around with us for a while, which crazy, uh, next month is our one year, which is nuts. Uh, time is flying. Um, but when we started, of course, mental health has been at the core of, of everything. Um, and, and sharing stories to inspire, motivate, and, and provide hope to people just for an hour a week because we were so tired of the, the glum and gloom of the rest of the world. And and the other thing was job seekers, recruiters, like, cause we truly were like, we can help everyone. <laughs> and, uh, and I, and I love that that was at our core, you know, wanting to do that, helping as many people as possible. And being that it's already the latter part of March, which blows my mind, uh, is our guest today is we're going, it's been since last year and I can't even think off the top of my head, but it's been a minimum of three, four, probably five months since we've had a, a job seeker on. Uh, so we're so blessed and honored to have Gabriella Burst with us today um, because there's so many levels of how this does apply uh, to the awesome journey, nonetheless, you know, the, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the downright crappy. Uh, and that applies when we're job seeking uh, because it, it's not an easy place to be for a lot of people. And it does impact our, our mental health and, and being overwhelmed with content in a way of like, I, I don't even know what to believe. Am I supposed to do this with my profile? Am I supposed to do this with my resume? Uh, it can seem quite overwhelming. And, and we're gonna talk about a lot of those things today, but of course, uh, highlight our guest, Gabriella. And um, and this is Christy's you know, springboard and what she loves and what she does every day and, and what she started to do uh, so long ago, guided by prayer, I might add, uh, to help people with their LinkedIn profiles and, and resume. She doesn't toot her own horn, but I'm tooting away. If y'all need help or you're not sure what to do with the job seeking, job hunting, what's true, what's not true. I don't know what to do with my LinkedIn profile. I don't know what to do with my resume. I don't know if they're right. I don't know if they're wrong. Reach out to her. That's what she's here for. That's what she does every single day. Uh, you can get a free consultation for 30 minutes. Um, and she so didn't even pay me to do that. And I know inside she's like, Kelly, stop. Uh, <laughs> but we're going to get into topics that we know will help so many people because we know so many people that truly are struggling. I have been out of work way too long and just been in the process of, of getting interview after interview or no interview after no interview. So um, sit back, relax, take some notes, send us some questions uh, and uh, to spend as much time with Gabriella because she really has a, a great story to share. Uh, and then Lord knows where we'll go with this conversation. So welcome. And before we get to Gabriella, I will turn it over to my amazing, beautiful soul sister and co-hosting here, Christy Howard. Thank you. I love having my job seekers on um, and watching their journey and watching them understand that the landscape is cray cray. Um, and, and that people, LinkedIn is the best place to be. That's where your business page is. But however, there's a lot of people that think that they're influencers and they know and they vomit the crap out there that yeah. if I hear one more time, well, I thought my page, my resume was supposed to just be one page. I'm sorry, you've got 15 years of experience having one bullet point. You're not telling me what you do. Why? How are you my solution? So, yes, I do the 30 minute free. Um, I talk to people daily. Mm -hmm. I even got up this morning. I don't usually do mornings because I work till very late at, in the night because I work in time zones. Um, but you know, understanding that you're a business, and once you get that understanding, we're not where we used to be. A job's just not a job. A company's just not going to be loyal to you. I just read somewhere that a somebody who two months worth of interviewing and uh 7 p.m the night before she was supposed to start got an email saying nope not happening she had stopped that had to feel great she had already signed she had stopped looking oh so, uh, you know 
it's ugly out there. It's so ugly out there. My heart breaks for everybody because both Kelly and I are huge mental health advocates. Mm -hmm. So with a mental health advocate, I'm a job seeker advocate. Um, so uh, Gabrielle and I met in a chat, um, Daryl Clack, wherever you are. We're no longer, yeah. in, no longer in that group, but um, we got to know each other. And I'm gonna let her tell her story of when she yeah. started and the different ways of fighting something. Mm -hmm because green's not really her color, she's not Irish. And, yeah. <laughs> and how she has utilized LinkedIn as her business page and her voice, because yeah. we get to know who she is. Don't we wanna know who the people are that you're gonna hire, gonna get yes. to know? Yes. Go girl. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so last year in, hi, I'm Gabriella. Um, last year in February, I actually worked for two companies at the same time. Um, I, there was a post about this recently. Just um, anyway, so I worked for two companies at the same time with permission during the same daytime hours. Um, in February, one of those companies had a reorg and let several of their employees go um, that had been with them for a, a long time. I've been with them for nine years. Um, mm. I was lucky that the other company that I worked for had a position they could bring me on to work full time. So I went back to working for the other company full time and just like very casually started putting in resumes, looking for jobs. Um, I made my resume by myself. It was not very good. Um, and, you know, just applying to jobs, mostly locally, um, some remote jobs as well. After like six months of doing that and really just not having any kind of success, I went to Google and had a conversation with my brother. And it was like, how do you find a job? <laughs> like, what is the best way to go about finding a job? And Google told me that you need to have a, a brand on LinkedIn. You need, you need to have LinkedIn visibility and have be posting on there and be active and build the network. And I'm like, shoot, I have a LinkedIn, but I don't know if I've ever done anything on it. I have like a hundred connections. Um, and that was just like, that was it. A hundred connections on LinkedIn. I had never made a post. And I was like, okay. So I'm sitting there looking at my LinkedIn profile. And I'm like, oh my God, where do I start? <laughs> what, do I, what do I even do? Um, <laughs> and so I kind of like started Googling like LinkedIn top voices and then I would go look at their profiles and kind of see what they were saying, the advice they were giving, how they built their brand. Um, and then one day I just decided to start posting um, job related stuff, experience related stuff, what I was going through with the job search, resumes. Um, and yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry, Paul. I did it so fast and I forgot to put captions on. I've done that two weeks in a row. I apologize. Or you can watch the replay on YouTube and it'll have the captions. Yeah, sorry. Um, so I said, let me just start posting and kind of see what happens. And I made one post kind of like, you know, hey, there are a ton of free resources out there for you. Use them. And instead of drowning, instead of drowning in job searching, instead of drowning in what to do and trying to figure out on your own, there are people out there who are giving free advice on the best way to do resume, the best way to do your LinkedIn, the best, the best places to look for a job, et cetera. Um, and that post, which is only like my maybe fifth or sixth post got 20,000 impressions and I gained a bunch of followers from it and connections from there. I just kind of, I just kept talking up about my experiences, what I was going through, the things that I was seeing. I still made some, Great. Some job related posts and I still do now. Um, but I kind of became, and this was not on purpose. It just kind of like what I fell into, like a positive voice, a positive force for job seekers. Um, I've always wanted to be extremely uplifting and encouraging um, and help give people confidence. And I feel like I've done that. Um, I had made a connection with someone who I made. So this kind of goes so there was 
the, the green banner debates started and it was a big hoopla. Everybody was talking about it. You couldn't go anywhere on LinkedIn without hearing about the green banner and what everyone's opinion was on it. Um, and I happened to comment on someone's post and cause she said, well, what happens if we switch the purple to job seekers and the green to hiring managers? Would people's view of the banner for job seekers be less bias? And I jokingly was like, well, what about just making them different colors all together? You could have a hot pink. Well, out of that joke, I created a banner in Canva and put it on my profile picture, turned off the open to work banner on LinkedIn because you couldn't have the open to work banner on and have the other banner showing, <clears throat> made it my profile picture. And I made a post about it like, they tell, they say you're supposed to find ways to stand out. What do you, you know, what does everybody think about this? And it was me with the pink, hot pink open to work banner. Um, and that was like my first post that kind of like went quote unquote viral. Um, I got so many connections from it. So many followers. One of the girls who thought it was hilarious what I did, she and I have become fast friends. We talk all the time. Um, together with her, we created a job seeker support group. Um, I have not done it as much as I wanted to. Life has kind of been hectic with the holidays. And then we have Mardi Gras here. And so more holidays, more kids off of school. Then Easter's like right behind it. Um, but we've had, I think we've had three, we've had six sessions, three nighttime sessions and three daytime ses sessions. Um, and people have shown up and have, you know, we give job hunting tips, resume tips, uh, different job boards that we've had success getting interviews with. And then just also to be there for people to vent and yeah, just, just have that support. Know somebody else is going through what you're going through, that you're not alone. Not everyone has outside support where they can go to family and friends. Um, and so right. you wanted to be a it. And I'm, I'm curious, see, I get to be the interrupter today. This is kind of cool. Um, <laughs> is I'm curious being in that it's a, a support group for job seekers, what are the things that you find like the most common things that people are talking about? Are there their biggest frustrations or struggles? So the, the biggest frustrations is just getting interviews. Um, that that and then being ghosted by recruiters, by hiring managers. Um, those are definitely the two biggest complaints that we have is just getting interviews, like getting your resume to be pulled and for someone to contact you and then being ghosted by someone after you've been contacted. Those are definitely the two biggest frustrations that I found. Um, and then that and a lot of like very negative stuff going on on, on, on LinkedIn, uh, all the conflicting advice makes it very hard to like figure out what you're supposed to do and what you're supposed to follow. Um, you know, because a lot of these people who are giving advice have large followings. They seem like authorities on the subject. And it's very hard to weed out what is good advice that you should follow and what is someone who's just trying to get click, who's just trying to get impressions and likes and gain a larger following. So I always explain that when you see somebody who puts something out, always go to their profile, see how long they've been doing whatever they're doing. Go down to the re recommendations, because if you're doing something good, you're going to get recommended. People are going to, you know, say that you're good. It, it just understand why they're putting it out there. It's just like you're looking at when you're applying for a job, you're going to research that company, research the person that's putting that information out. I mean, the one, you know, don't wear glasses in an interview because it'll make you look old. Seriously, people? I mean, you know, or, oh, if you have gray hair, you're gonna look old. How, how many young women have turned their hair gray? Right, so, silver was a trend there for a while. Too. Yes, it was. And, ha and going back to your natural hair was a trend too, like not having any. 2020, yeah. And so, craziness. use common sense. Because yeah. you're a business. Yeah. Don't go listening to influencers on Instagram. They might have, people might have great big followings, but especially when you're seeing recruiters going back and going, no, your other, other recruiters or other people saying, no, you're not right. No, you're not right. They're getting it for the attention. Yeah, I was going to say, there's a huge difference between an influencer 
and someone who is, you know, expert or actually knows the field, because people do stuff exactly like you, you were just saying, Gabriella and Christy, I know you say this all the time. They're just doing it for clicks and, and for popularity. It's not really helping because even the point about your uh, making it a hot pink banner, it got you a ton of attention. It went viral. It created awesome contacts. So let's give that props where it belongs. Um, but it wasn't doing the things on the side of getting interviews or, but it was connecting you to people who could end up helping you. So understand that just doing a post that gets attention isn't gonna necessarily be the mean to the end, but is probably a step in a direction. Um, but to, to just go off of, of what Christy was saying, cause we see this all the time. Cause I, I, I have Christy, so I can go to her and be like, girl, I just saw that they're saying this is a new trend. Is this right? And she'll be like, oh heck no, that's like complete garbage. Um, or yes, oh, actually, yeah, no, nicely that I don't say. <laughs> yeah. I, it, I love her so much. Um, but when people will say things like, hey, I'm doing a $1,200 eight week workshop, and we've seen this too many times, I'm not gonna lie. Um, and it's people that we know that this isn't what they did for a living. And I'm like, what do you mean you're doing an eight week workshop that's 1200 bucks on, on LinkedIn optimization and, and, and posts and, and how to get set up and all of this thing? If you went to the person's profile, their LinkedIn profile was not optimized and you could see they were in a totally different industry for years beforehand. And like Christy was saying, had only been in this space for five minutes. And it's like, they're, they're trying to take advantage of an opportunity. And there's no recommendations. Nobody's saying, yes, they know what they were doing. I'm gonna, what bring, they do. I'm gonna bring in, well, I'm gonna bring in a comment. Yes. Um, how to be seen and, and the long game is another topic. Every, one yeah. says that you need to know people to get hired about 90% of the time. Yes and no. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yes and no. I think yes and no, for sure. You never know who somebody knows that needs to know right. you. However, it's about just researching and being proactive of building a relationship with that person that works there. You can literally yes. build a relationship at the at the company without having somebody, you know, knowing them. It's following them on their LinkedIn, you know, commenting on them, understanding who they are, because you it's it's about a relationship. But networking, LinkedIn is a networking site. We Kelly and I've been on it since the early two thousands, yeah. and it's all and that's how we met. It's all yeah. about networking and when you post something understand that that's your business hey mm -hmm. not the company that you work for because your name's not on their company but that's your business page so if you want to share something like working two jobs that's coming from your voice and if you have an issue with that and you feel like you have to be a naysayer look inside yeah. yourself and wonder why you're saying that because many of us, I've worked in jobs most of my life because especially now with this economy and companies are not paying crap, yeah, we can juggle. We can, you know, do two jobs at once. And that's somebody you want to hire. One, you're going to pay them so they don't have to do two jobs, but understand that they're getting so much more experience to bring to the table. I want to interject one thing before we turn it back over to Gabriella, because I know you've got a great thing on that, the, the two jobs. You just did a post the other day uh, on it, which was fantastic. Um, is when I came back to, and you you uh, said this earlier to Gabriella, when I came back to LinkedIn, for lack of a better term, working in financial services, specifically in capital markets and private equity, um, I had FINRA to deal with from a business perspective. So I didn't do a lot on social media because you, one, you weren't allowed to, and it used to be your online business card. So it wasn't, I wasn't really looking to do anything. And even if I did post, I did have compliance and legal because I worked for the organization would have to look. So we understand that people have some limitations depending on what you do, but what happened in 2020 uh, and people coming back uh, or coming to for the first time is it became the platform of choice. People started getting vulnerable and sharing their own stories. Um, and which is why I think it was attractive uh, with your post, Gabriella, because you were just authentically you. You weren't trying to put out what you thought people wanted to hear. 
uh, you, you were just like, hey, this is my experience, this is what I'm dealing with, like who's with me sort of situation. And people love that. And then the last thing on, on this is I will say, you do never know who you know, who's in your network, what connection knows, whatever. I've gotten work just because I've had people that I used to work with in, in the institutional investment space that they're like, I see you in my feed all the time. Love what you're doing because consistency is huge on, on your posting. But they reached out and were like, hey, this might be nuts, but would you be willing to help us on a project? And it was 100% only because they were seeing my LinkedIn feed and uh, uh, in reach or seeing me in their LinkedIn feed and reached out. So again, you never know how it can happen. It's not always just based on uh, a recruiter or an application somewhere. Um, so I'm stepping out and, and I'm handing it back over to you, girl. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so yeah, those were those were definitely some of the main complaints. Um, and then to touch on, you know, what Brittany said about you didn't know someone. Yeah. I have interviewed and it like it kind of sucks to say this because like you feel like if you've interviewed with this many companies, like you should have gotten an offer by now. And it does at times make you like reflect internally and be like one hundred percent. It it does. Like it's like, am I doing something wrong? Is something wrong with me? I have interviewed with I think it's now with the the, the three recent interviews, forty companies. I have interviewed with forty companies. Four of those um, since Christy has redone my resume and I, those were ones I applied to. Let's, let's, go, let's go back. So you were doing, you created your own <laughs> and then you and I met with my, my free consultations for 30, right. 30 minutes. I, right. <clears throat> so I show you everything and yes. give you everything and go yes. do it yourself. Half, half of those interviews have been since Christy and I have had our chat. Um, and then since she's totally redone mm -hmm. my resume, um, I had four interview um, opportunities that were within 24 hours of applying. I was being reached out to. I'm gonna and just, that was just this I'm week, gonna right? My horn. What do they say about your questions and your resume? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, they, whenever I ask the questions, because Christy so kindly provides with questions that you should be asking oh, on the interview. The um, yes. Every single one of the questions that I've asked that came from Christy's sheet have been, those are amazing questions. Um, and then, you know, everyone is obviously the quick turnaround of getting the interview from the application time shows that my resume is being kind of, is hitting the keywords, is hitting what they're looking for. They're seeing what they're looking for quickly to pull me up to the top. Um, so you. I, do know what I, <laughs> I just wanted to interject context to timeline. When did you have those four interviews? How many companies did you do? Cause having 40, cause I think when we originally talked to you to have 37, but what was the time frame in those? Just so people have an understanding of that. Um, so uh, 20 of them happened in between October and January. Um, Christy and I had a chat early in January. Um, the other 20 have happened since January, since I revamped after our 30 minute free session. Um, and then the four, the, the four since she's actually redone my resume has been in the last week and a half. Which is fantastic. A week and a half. Turn it around. Yeah. Because to go off on, there, were, there was a, a statistic, and I won't go down the, the whole statistic path, um, is the, the, one of the articles that Christy shared today. But the whole point is you don't know who to believe because I can pull any statistic to back up a narrative that I want to push out. Like, hence the world we live in, people. Um, I can do that, too. Um, but the one of the things set, stated out of out of 250 applicants, 8.3 8 people, which I don't know a 0.3 person, but whatever, uh, actually did an interview. Um, so when you think about, so when uh, Gabriella said, well, I got four in the last week, it's like, that actually is massive. And I know people who are actively looking would say like, girl, what are you doing? Because <laughs> I haven't had four in the last, you know, two months or, or month because ghosting is such a, a massive a massive thing. So I just wanted to add context. Well, kind of also, that. she's now, she's got the titles that go with what she's looking for to show her yeah. strength. And she share, she shares her story as a business person. Um, you know, before it was a little bit of this and that. I mean, it would have, you know, some of the keywords on her, her you know, headline and then her about. Now we know who she is. I mean, 
that's the whole thing. Your business, your LinkedIn is your business page. But for the also, you know, I and I know that, you know, I think we had talked about that you were sort of worried about, you know, your um Yes, I think you have spoken to your brother that, about your newsletter, what you're, you're posting. I'm like, that's your voice, though. That's your voice. And you're sharing your own story and your voice that's going to connect with somebody else that needs to hear that and just say, oh, my gosh, I, I can relate. And this is the reason why your posts are going. So, you know, they're blowing up because you're going to have your haters. Don't cater to them. Just thank them because those haters <laughs> going to tell you that, you know, something you know, right when you have that happen. but for the fact that they have to tell you this means yeah. that you're doing something good you're, you're ruffling those feathers but other people are saying hey she's got a point there and you're being transparent with your voice instead of just the same you know well, p.s when you're i've interviewed hundreds of people over my career i love interviewing people um <laughs> But the, some of the best hires I've ever made, and if you know, and, and using uh, LinkedIn as a platform to see people and see their personality in their posts, you hire the person for who they are, not necessarily for the skill set. Because I've hired people that did not have the skill set for a certain position, but man, they had the personality, the they fit what needed to be in that department or in that position, and they crushed it. Um, because you can't teach people how to be, and that is a mistake I think a lot of people make on, on LinkedIn, is they try to be what they think they're supposed to be. And it's like, y'all, people see right through that crap, I'm telling you. It's called the masks, kids. Take yeah. off the masks. Just take off. And that's, that's the reason why LinkedIn has about. It's yeah. not about your resume. It's about you. And when you go for an interview, they're going to say, well, tell me about yourself. I don't want to hear about your resume. I got it right in front of me. I want to know why you do what right. you do and why we're having this conversation. Yeah. So let's go into more about the green. Yes, let's do it. Now, I will say that I have gotten a lot of attention just having the pink banner up. No, I get it. Um, I will. I did. I did. I did get For a lot sure. of attention just having the but pink banner. Recruit, people, it was, it was a talking that. point. It was a conversation point. But, but the recruiters. Christy, and I didn't have a recruiter still turned on, but I have learned that not all recruiters pay for a LinkedIn recruiter because it is something you have to charge for. So even though they're a recruiter, they may not pay for pay for the visibility of the recruiter only function for the green banner. Um, I turned on my green banner um, and had several recruiters reach out to me asking for my resume. Imagine that. <laughs> But I made that. a compromise. <laughs> I know you got the and the green. That's I, good. I made a compromise and I adjusted my banner in Canva to be on the other side. So I have Love my it. pink banner and my green banner still on my profile picture. Because you don't want to take away your identity, but imagine that turning on that that banner. Because also all those people, you can sit there and talk about that you're looking for a job, but there's yeah. people that aren't seeing your feed. And they don't know that you're looking for a job and right. nobody should be embarrassed. Everyone's looking for a job. You've seen more people with a green banner. Unfortunately, welcome to the world. People right. are toxic. Oh, oh, because how many people have a job, but they're looking for more work because they need supplemental income to make ends meet. So they're working in a very toxic environment and they're just like, yeah, this isn't working for me. Yeah. Um, I don't know, Brittany. Let's uh -oh. see what she has to say. <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> it's very difficult as a job seeker to know who to listen to at times. In the, oh, the internet, the 500 people in your DMs. Wow, you get 500 DMs. Offering wow. services and whoever vomits their knowledge. That's as I say. When you're trying so hard and you try everything and you do not know which is the best approach when results you want are not being had. It is a struggle out there for finding the real. It's also going back to going to the people who, those 500 people that DM you, finding out who they are. Are they just pitch slapping you? I was gonna say why. Um, but understand what are they selling you? For me, did I sell you? No, I gave you no. my website. If you want to invest, it's on you, not on me. I don't care either way. Right. But, you know, 
Yeah. I don't, you know, you're looking for the people that want to help you, not to right. sell you. Right. That, so, that was one thing when Christy and I had our 30 minute, she was actually we went over 30 minutes. She gave me more of her time than the, the, the 30 minutes. I just, I um, that she was extremely thorough and she said, I will never DM you again asking you if you're going to sign up for my services. I'm not going to pressure you to go sign up right now. I will never do that. If and when you want my help after this, you will come to me and you will do it. And, um, the, I actually probably do get 500 DMs so that right. some people do actually have that if we're being, but so she was like, there was no pressure from her to come sign up with her um, or to utilize, to, to come pay for her services. She's like, if, and when you want it, I am there. Um, but I also and, said to you after the 30 minutes, I said, once you do what you got to do, send me your resume, show and me she your did. She looked at it again. If I have she to tweet from OCD. Yeah. And I, I want to reiterate one major point with, with this that just, just occurred um, is because it goes to the whole thing of, uh, one, we, we, we buy people, we don't buy things. I don't care what your widget, and I'm, I, as a marketing executive, I'm telling you this, people do not buy your product, widget, service, whatever it is. They buy you, period, the end. There is nothing anyone who follows me knows the pitch slap is one of my biggest pet peeves <laughs> on the planet. Uh, the, the, the 500 DMS, I was thinking like from recruiters and I'm like, man, I get way too many, but I don't know if they're all from recruiters, but in any event, um, pitch slapping is the worst thing. And when you're trying to force something down my throat, we don't want to take it because it's, it's energy. And how I say this to sales teams that I've, I've worked with over the years is when somebody lunges at you, what, what is your, your response? Naturally it's to pull away. Well, that's what you're doing when you're pitch slapping or you're following up with someone before you've even hung up the phone. They've got that automated thing. Hey, now you can purchase my service of this, this, and this. Um, don't miss out. Now you're in their funnel, um, which there's a perfect point in time for that as well. But the thing is when someone lets it be, hey, I shared this information with you. And now if you decide that you would want someone, please reach out to me. I'm not going to pressure. I'm not, I don't, because she doesn't need to sell anybody. Um, and that's the whole point. She just wants to help people. And that's what, what is attractive um, 100%. And we all love that. I appreciate that because it's a practice that more people need to do is stop pressure selling and just stop selling because people don't want to be sold. Well, especially when job seekers are having a hard enough time. Yes. Guess what? They don't have a job. They don't have the money. They can't. Yeah. Right. And, and I don't need you to make me feel worse. Yep. I mean, because that's what it does. <laughs> one of the other things about Christy during our call, you know, my resume was one page. <laughs> and she looked at it and she said, <laughs> she's like, you have had a job for 12 years, the same job, a career, not like, a, you know, not just some like babysitting job. You've had a job, a career for 12 years. You should never have a one page resume. <laughs> she's like, Never. You should never have a one-page resume. Um, you get but more also, than those three bullet points. <laughs> uh, but, also, but also, you know, I did not just purchase Christie's resume and LinkedIn optimization package. I also did her package that includes like coaching. Um, Cause one of the things she and I talked about was that I'm, I am getting to some final interviews. I've gotten to the final at least a quarter of the times I've interviewed. So, awesome. um, and I said, the bridesmaid, never but the bride, but you can soon be the bride. But it'll happen. And I said, I said, there has to be something in the way I'm portraying myself in those finals that someone else is getting chosen and not me. And I don't think it's because of my skills. I have, I think it's because of like a confidence issue. Like I don't, I, it, it, the imposter syndrome, even though you try to fight it, is there. And I think it comes out sometimes it, when you're interviewing, well, especially interview if it's a high stress. And we say that a lot. And that's why I think the confidence coaching with, with interview prep is so important because when you've been out of work for a long time, it, I don't care who you are. I'm same. I mean, I, I get in a place where I'm like, man, this, it, it weighs on you and it does, it, it's challenging because it's that I'm not good enough thing that we all have in us that starts ringing. And, and it's like, man, why can't, why can't I get through this? Um, but so having the the confidence coaching to get you there but as an interviewer you can smell when someone's desperate and it reads wrong it it reads like exactly like you said it reads not confident it reads maybe 
non-authentic. So there, there's a lot of little things that it can do that do matter, but they're not tangible, right? Um, but you do, and when we talked about this, I think this is a, a, a good point for others too. You do ask afterwards, like, hey, what, what could I have done better or, or the such to try to get feedback, which I know you don't always, but you do that, right? I do, and they usually don't answer you. I have asked, and I literally have. I've gotten, I've got, I've been given feedback one time. It was a job that they had headhunted me. Uh, I still am in connection with that hiring manager. I adore her. I, I cried when they told me no. I haven't cried about any job that I've been rejected from. Oh. Um, and the recruiter actually told me the hiring manager was in tears having to make the decision. Like, that's just how, yeah. like, it was not an easy decision at all. I still am connected with that hiring manager. I adore her. You never knew what could happen down the road. Um, and I adored the director, too. I met with all three of them. I got to the final on that one. Um, and I think what I think what I I think the then they said, look, you're perfect. Please don't change anything about you. We loved you. You know, you're so like you're amazing. Mm -hmm. I don't think that I portray and look th like thinking back to that final interview with the director, which is just a culture interview. Really, she didn't ask me any technical skills. Um, I don't think I portrayed that. I had the confidence to come in because it was a job that I'd never done before. It was working with the marketing department, but it was for source. It was doing sourcing. I've never mm -hmm. been a sourcer before for contracts. And I let them, you know, they knew that they knew me that when they recruited me. Yeah, and they, they, right. they did. They reached out to I me on LinkedIn. Still, I can't teach you to be. I mean, that's because exactly of my pink banner post. Actually, she found me and okay. followed me. You went on that one. <laughs> um, but also because of my personality, she said, you're per like, you just have like the best personality. And the pink banner was just a piece of that personality of just, you know, who I am. I love that. Um, and it was not because of the pink person. It was not because of the pink banner. It was because of what the pink banner showcased of who I am. My authenticity. And I think a, a um, good way to spin uh, from that and, and Christy, this is uh Oh crap! I, I sort of lost my train. Well, I'm going back to what you were saying. You didn't. You didn't feel like you had the confidence to say, "Hey, I, I can learn this." It's. It's I not because their their one thing is they chose someone who already had sourcing experience mm -hmm. because they felt there would be less ramp up time. Right. I don't think I did a good enough job portraying in that interview how quickly I pick up new skills yep. and how fast I learn new things. And I think and if I had gone more in that direction and more like, well, hey, like I know. Because I do think that I said like, oh, well, I was kind of shocked when she reached out to me because I've never done anything like this before. So I, w I wasn't sure she had picked the right person. And I think that kind of portrayed to them like it, it was just not something that and I, they knew I didn't have any experience in it because they my resume showed that I had no experience in it. Right. But instead of going instead of giving them confidence that I could easily pick up the skill and there would not be a super long ramp of time because I could pick it up easily and do it on my own. I yeah. feel like they felt they had to go, even though they love me, they felt they had to go with someone who would Which take this less training. But right. this, but this, but this, but this, do you this think is where this is storytelling is, comes in. And we've had, again? this is where your storytelling comes in. When we've had yeah. Neil on, um, your storytelling is when they're at you're telling them the story of showing them how quick you can learn something how quick you can do it and instead of saying i've done this you share the story so then they've got the visual of how fast you can and then that gives you that confidence of okay i have this i have a background of having to learn things fast but i'm going to share the story of what i've done and how i can do that and that's do you think another thing there is too is, and I mean, I do this and I, I loved it when people would ask me this question is, you know, Hey, what are your, what are your immediate goals, short-term goals and long-term goals for this position? Like, what is it that, that you're looking? Cause then it, it opens that door to that opportunity. Well, Hey, I don't have that, but man, I, I mean, it's a, a good way to transition because I think what can happen to, uh, to kind of go off what you were just saying before that, uh, Gabriella is, you weren't thinking in that mindset at the time. It's just like, I don't have that skill set. So I, I, I wasn't thinking of, to say how quickly I can learn into something where I don't know, which ha which is why having a confidence coach and going over those things afterwards to say like, here's things that you should bring up later. Because I think people do forget 
Um, and I recommend this, and I know the world is different, and sometimes we just need a job to pay the bills, and we're not thinking about the culture as much as, as we used to. You need to also be questioning the business in the same way, because you don't want to put yourself in an environment where you're, you're not going to do well. Like, understand that that's an okay thing for you to be like, hey, tell me about your, you know, your culture. And a lot of businesses do lie. I'm not going to lie. But if, yeah. if you're making it to a certain point, ask to go around in, in the building or, or talk to the other team members. I always did that hiring. Yeah, if someone see, you're, you're an executive. It's a different, that's a different game. As an executive, you can do that. Lower level, you're not. You can ask. We're not going to let you walk around. That was my point. Is you need to ask those questions because you know where you thrive or where you don't, and you you do need to be aware of asking those questions. You you're not there just to answer the questions. You're interviewing them just as much as they're interviewing you. Yeah, that that job was mine to lose and to learn from. Yeah, and it was it was definitely like a learning experience because. I I do think that they, I was their top pick and I just didn't portray the confidence that they needed to go with someone who had none of the experience for the the exact role. Um, again, I still do keep it up with the hiring manager. Um, and you never know, there might be a position open in the company. And I loved her and the director and the recruiter. And I, I do think culturally it would have been a really good fit. Um, but, always but, remember, but always remember you apply they call you they saw that you didn't have that experience you That's already right. know that they know that you don't have that experience so to be confident going well you know they know i'm here but let, i'm going to show them my confidence because they called me in yeah. and that's when you know the big thing and and i think you know you always i send you those questions what is it on my resume that we're having this conversation what is it on my resume that you ha you want some clarification? So on my resume, it was always you moved around a lot, you know, New York, Chicago, California, and I, my answer. And you, I was in different industries. I was single. I could. <laughs> so <laughs> look at the industries that I was able to walk into. Here, yeah. you're answering what they might have already. They've made an assumption to. Mm -hmm. And they're also letting you know what your strong suit is, what what grabbed them to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. Right, one hundred percent. Yeah, I did a um, a one way. I had a recruiter screening last week. Um, I did a one way interview. They had sent me after the screening. There was a one way interview that they had you do plus an assessment that they had you take. It was it wasn't an assessment like one of those like personality ones. It was like a you know. Yeah, um, yeah. But I, I did it and I submitted it and I'm like, I literally sat down. I'm like, I bombed. I like, I, for, and like in my head, I was like, I did, this was just shit. I don't know. <laughs> I'll never hear back from them again. Right. Um, and then last night I got the request to go to the next, which was a team interview with you know, two or three other team members about two hours mm -hmm. that I'm, I'm waiting to schedule. But it's like, you know, you really do get into your own head and you really yep. do like, what do I always say? <laughs> get out you, of like, you not Like you, you really do like screw yourself up. Like when you, yep. you think about, Oh man, I just, did, I know that I did terrible. Like th there's no way that I'm going to hear back. Like you do that to right. yourself. And then yes. you, and I'm not, you beat yourself and look, up. I'm, and yeah. look, I'm guilty of thinking like, oh, wow, that interview went so well. I'm definitely going to get on to the next phase. And then like being like, oh, sorry. Another way. Like I'm super guilty of like just being super confident about every interview that I come out of. Um, and I think part of that is like I have a very bubbly personality. So it's hard for you to like look like uninterested when we're having a, a call. I, I smile a lot. I have a very big smile. I look a very, I'm not trying to brag, but like I just, you know, it's hard to like not. So like it looks like things are going well because you're face to face and I have, you know, my, you're enjoying I've been it. Told, you're passionate I, about it. Yeah. And so I think it's hard for the person to like be like, to look like things are not going well in, in the time because like, you're just like the way you're coming off and like you get the, Oh, sorry, we're going with another, you know, we're going another way. And you're sometimes you're kind of shocked. You're like, Oh, wow. I had no idea that was going to be the outcome. Cause I really think that interview went so well. And, 
again, a guilty again, like going back. It's also working your confidence. But let's go back to your post. Let's go back to how you're um, really finding your voice and you're sharing so much. Um, and the different, you're going out of the, outside the box. You're you're not um, say, playing it safe, which is great. Who wants to play safe? Um, <laughs> no. Um, and that's actually one of the things that my brother's like, he kind of, he's like, you need to like calm down. And I'm like, mm, no, when have, I, when have you, when have you ever known me to be calm? First of all, I'm not a calm, I'm not a calm person. Like I've, like I've never, I need, I don't have my key ring right here. Um, but my aunt gave me a key ring that she bought it from a store. It's basically like, um, you know, sorry about the way I act. I just had to be dramatic first or something like that. And then I got over it. Like, it's just like, you know, it's just like one of those things. My family knows that like, I'm very passionate about stuff. I get very worked up about the things that I'm passionate about. And then once I'm able to like see level headed, I, I calm down and everything's fine. Um, and so when I'm very passionate about something, I use my voice to talk about that. Um, yeah. my yeah. post that I made yesterday, um, there was a recruiter who a couple of days ago posted that if he sees anyone who worked two jobs in the, t in the same time span, so has any overlapping dates yeah. that it's a red flag for him. He assumes, he assumes that they were lying to their, both their employer, their employers and so, being deceptive. That word is and, home again. That assume. Okay. And yeah. I made a post that ruffled a couple of people's feathers um, right. about it's really Good bold you. of you to assume that without getting context. Right. Why I thought would it was you a just, great post, by the way. I was not. It, I, it it definitely, was I ended up having yeah. I ended up having to block a recruiter from the post because he he said you have he he told me that I have low emotional IQ, low emotional intelligence, um, that I'm dishonest. Um, so, and so then it's and I had to put up to a group here. Like what a jerk! He was reflecting his own stuff on you exactly. all the time. <laughs> when you criticize it, it, it is about you. I mean, come and on, someone who I never, I've literally never spoken to before, told me that I'm being dishonest, and then <gasps> I have low emotional intelligence. Um, and then on top of that, told me that I must be one of those people that said I already know all. I already knew all I need to know. At that point, I blocked him. I'm like, nope. For you. I, I, Nobody. Knows. And you know, I, I will have intelligent conversations with people. Yes. where we're in disagreement of things. I don't need you yes. to agree with me. Not everyone's going right. to agree. I will have a very long drawn out conversation with someone that disagrees with me in a very respectful manner. But the moment you start attacking and belittling me when you don't know me over a post on LinkedIn, I'm not that's going okay. to accept that. And he didn't that's like that I stood up for right. myself. That's why he kept hitting lower and lower. And before I blocked him, I said, you know what? I said, you don't know me. And I don't show, I don't know you, but all you're doing is attacking and belittling me and you're not worth it. And I blocked him. Good for and, you. But, he, and, but see, that's the whole thing. When people do that, other it. people are seeing who they are. <laughs> it's like, do you not get that? You're 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 being a jerk, yet all it. these other people are seeing that you're a jerk. So and there are other people that have disagreed with me on the post. And I just I explained to them where I was coming from and that you to disqualify someone without getting context yes. means that you're 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 assuming someone is dishonest and has no integrity based yeah. off of a couple of lines on a resume on their LinkedIn profile. Yeah. And if you're, if that's the kind of person you are, then you're, you're dealing with some sort of internal biases that you need to work through. But those kind of biases should not be in the hiring process. Right. Yeah. When you see a resume, if the person is qualified before disqualifying them from it, from being, from, from becoming a candidate, because you saw they worked two jobs that overlapped in years or months, it's your job as a recruiter, and I don't want to tell recruiters, I'm not a recruiter, so, but, but like, it's not your job to say, oh, well, they must have been lying, so I'm going to disqualify them from being able to be considered. That, you like, don't know the story. You don't know the story. There's no, and, and obviously they put it on their resume. They put on their resume, they work two jobs at the same time. They're not trying to hide it. Right. Right. Wait, it's right there. <laughs> it's not like they lied yes, about the day they yes, worked on the job, the put on the resume, and then you found out they lied. They they were honest about working two jobs over a some over the over a span right. of the same time. Well, and that's the problem with the biases and the discrimination. I mean, that's that a, my oh, I can show that you know on my LinkedIn that I you know worked way back when. I'm like, I had somebody say, well, you've got 11 pages. If I if I printed out your PDF of your LinkedIn, I'm thinking. Wow, you're really digging into my LinkedIn. You've got 11 pages. 
damn right, I'm 62 years old. <laughs> you know, trust me, I didn't know everything that I did when I started at 13. I right. managed the country club at 20. I'm going to show that at 20, in my 20s, I managed three restaurants, right. two bars, and all this stuff to show mm -hmm. my experiences. Right. Yes, you're going to figure out how old I am, but that shows that I work. I'm not sitting around, you know, I, I talked to a girlfriend the other day that has a, um, a daughter who has a job. It's hybrid. So when she's not in the office, she has one of these mouses that moves around because companies are making sure that you're working. So it automatically mm -hmm. moves around. And that person's off getting her nails done and everything like that. I'm like, this is the reason why old school has gone out the window. Because you've got people who aren't even working. They're just taking the paycheck. They're just... Oh, yeah. yeah. Here's a question I have for you based on what you just said, Christy, because I, I think this is a thing that a lot of people, especially who are older, who have experience, um, that they question this because recruiters and or resume writers will say different things because uh, I've had multiple people say different things it, because my very first career, not my first job, my first career, I was with them for 10 years and I was young when I started. So when you go back, you can figure out approximately how old I am. They told me to change my resume because I was going to get booted out of getting looked at because they would figure out could because a, a, a young HR manager uh, who a lot of organizations do use, they don't have any idea. They just know that you're approximately this age. So you're out of the running, um, which is ridiculous. Should I do that? This is no. Howard. No. First of all, you don't, want to, dump, you don't yeah. want to dump down your resume because that's your experience. That's why you're bringing right. what you know to the place. Now, yes, on on resumes, we have additional experience with no you know dates on it. So I have when I worked for Oracle, and then I have when I worked for Dallas. Between those ten years, those ten years from San Diego to Dallas, I were I lived in Scottsdale. Yes, I had you know. It, experience, but there wasn't, it didn't, it wasn't the strength that I wanted to show on my resume. However, I don't have the years on my resume under additional experience. You can go over to my LinkedIn and see how old I am. You can add that you up. You blast I, it out all the time. My, but job seekers, my job seekers are not afraid me. to say that because ageism is a thing. And I know a lot of people know, like, should I be loud and proud of it? You or how, how do I deal with it? Because it's happening. Unfortunately, that's just how stupid the companies are right now. And I'm sorry, companies are being stupid. Just like I said, the woman was like supposed to start the next day. And it's like, oh, you're not, you don't have a job. So you bring this experience in. Where do you think it started? 10 years ago, all of a sudden you got all this experience. No, it's back, back when, but we're just not putting the eight. The, the, and, and that's another thing that I tend to try to stay away from when you say, I'm an experience with 20 years or even 19 years. The pro and I use this as Gabrielle will know. You're going to have that person who just stopped waitressing or waiter being a waiter at Outback. Now they're a recruiter and they have power in their hands. They've got a job description and they're going to go, wow, 20 years. I, I was like five. Um, oh, okay, they're old. So we're not, you don't you want to, or spoon feed them. When you have Microsoft Suite, spell out Microsoft Suite and then put everything that you know that you've done on Microsoft Suite because recruiters will, these young recruiters will say, I don't see Excel on their page, on their resume. Oh God. But it says Microsoft Suite. So understanding that these recruiters, a lot of these um, rejections are not about you. It's the stupidity that's out there. Yeah. It's well, the I think you just reminded me of one of the things that came up recently that you told me, because I didn't know this. It used to be that you had 50 skills that you could put on your profile. Yeah, just on now. And now they raised it to 100. Yeah. But one of the things I find aggravating about some of the LinkedIn stuff, and this is totally exemplifying what you just said, is it'll say you have six of the 10 qualifications of this job and you can go see what ones you're missing. And it's like, 
um, all of those are a subset of what my skill is above that. But that's, not, but that's not the job. That's not the company. It's LinkedIn pulling your skill set. So with my husband, who's a salesperson, everything says sales. VP of sales, CEO of sales, everything says sales. We don't have sales under skill because we don't need to. Any job that we look at, it's like you're missing sales. Really? It's because LinkedIn pulls from that job description, assuming making, you know, the algorithm or whatever to pull out what, you know, some of the jobs that they're looking, you know, some of the skills. Mm -hmm. So they're only grabbing over what's on your job, on, on your skill set. And I think that's why, I don't know, but I'm assuming that's why LinkedIn said, let's go for the 50, get rid of the 50, let's go more. We can go more. We can go for the soft skills. We can go for the hard skills. Also, just to note with anybody who's listening to, when you see 500 to 1,000 applicants, it means that's how many people have touched the page. Just touch the On page. On LinkedIn, yes. Say yes. that again. How, how will they know? How would they again. Say that all over again, because a lot of people don't understand that. When it's, you have how many applicants, it means that's how many people have touched that page, meaning they opened the page to see what the job is. Because a lot of these jobs you have to touch applied, it goes over to their website. How does LinkedIn know that you applied? I don't. You could have just clicked it and locked. Yeah. So don't run from that. Just because you see 1,100 applicants, that does not mean that there's been 1,100 applicants. I'm one of those people that touches pages a lot because with my clients, I tend to send, I'll find a job. Right. Oh, there you go. Here's a job. Here's your job. So uh, just knowing that you have to be strategic mm -hmm. and he's throwing out 700 job, you know, applica applications. Why? Well, I can do that job. Now, at Gabriella was very good because she knew enough about the job that she didn't have the experience for, for the fact that they called her in. And then she's built that relationship with the recruiters that have kept in touch with her because in their eyes, this is somebody we want in our company. And that one day, and it has happened, the companies will create a job because they want that person in. So it's about having those relationships as well and seeing the personality. She has a personality on there. She chimes in. She shares her voice. You know she's a mom. And, oh, her kid is so cute. She loves her, you know, the dogs. You know who she is. And those who are naysayers or haters, that's their issue. And she, you know, you were smart. You're just like, look, you don't know me. Boom, you're done. Because you're a troll. You're a little person. You can tell that I'm sort of passionate about this crap. No, uh -uh. Stop it. <laughs> I wish you would but be, Christy. I want job seekers to have the job that they want to have for them, not for the paycheck for, or for the company, because companies are not loyal. You have to work it as if you are an entrepreneur. And guess what? Everyone's an entrepreneur. You have your brand. I mean, Gabrielle, she's an entrepreneur. She knows business. She's gone in and helped businesses grow their businesses. Did that make sense? Businesses, businesses. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So, so share a little bit more now that I just went off on my, you know. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, we're coming up I on know, the I just, I, 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 I talk to people daily. And when my I hear God. things, I'm just like, oh my gosh. Um, yeah, it just, and I get it. There's so much stuff out there. But for me, I try to share the people like the article that I shared today. The guy I think is over from the over of the EU. Yeah. But he has facts. Yeah. You want the facts. Yeah. Um, so I mean, one of the things that we do share in our job seeker group is to not get overwhelmed by the rampant amount of both accurate and inaccurate advice on LinkedIn yeah. and to find what works for you. If what you're doing is not working, then go find another, then, then go look for ways to change it. If you're getting interviews, you don't have to change your resume. You don't have to get a resume rewrite, but maybe look at getting a, a career coach or someone who helps with interview prep. And it could, and you don't have to pay for it. There are people who you can make connections with who will offer to help you. Um, if you're not getting interviews, 
then maybe it is your resume and you, you need maybe need to look into revamping your resume or paying to have someone help you with that. Um, you know, so that it, it's really if things are working for you and you're getting the interviews and you're getting that you got to find out the things that's not working and then tweak those things. If none of what, if none of what you're doing is working, then yes, you need to, you probably need to go find someone who to help you, whether you pay for that service or someone you've connected with, who's willing to do it a little bit for free. Um, and then don't, you know, LinkedIn is very powerful. I don't have a real work connection outside of LinkedIn. Um, but a lot of people do don't, don't negate the fact that you have people outside of LinkedIn who may be able to help you as well. So, Where can people find your group, Gabriella? Um, it's I think we have it private. If anyone is interested in joining that group, they can send me a message, um, and I will share the link to the group with them. We are and definitely on connect, connect with her and bring her bell as well as ours for the fact that her content is so good. <laughs> It's so good. You you can relate to it. I mean, even if you're not a job seeker, you're just like, you go, girl. Yes. Oh, I totally. see where you're coming from. <laughs> because we've all had to look for jobs. Yeah. One time or another. Um, yeah, right now, we are trying to schedule another one. I've been I've been trying to find a time that works for the last couple of weeks. Um, but we are trying to schedule one, another session, two sessions in the next couple of weeks. So if you're someone who needs that support and it's a lot about sharing, it's not just sharing tips and tricks, but also just somewhere to vent and to find people who understand what you're going through uh, because making sure you take care of your mental health is so important. Mm -hmm. And, you know, having somewhere to vent and to get that support is so it is, I mean, it can be literally life or death, you know, for some people. So, yes. And just so understand true. that the door might close because you just wasn't supposed to go through it. Right. And it's not right. about you. Sometimes, again, you could get that rejection letter and they might have had an internal candidate. They might have changed directions, their budget. I, just anything can happen. So just don't take it so personally. And yes, I know people have been doing it for seven months. But this is a different, we're in a different animal here. Um, companies are not working like they used to. Mm -mm. I was always yeah. fortunate. I either got hired that day or the next day. Oh, but yeah. yeah, it's not safe. I, I often didn't go through all these interviews. Um, yeah. You know, the culture and stuff like that. Either you like, I always looked at interviewing as if I was dating and I dated a lot. So it's a culture thing. Yeah. And I, I just want to reiterate what, what Christy was just saying, because I think it's so important for people to understand. And, and I have to remind myself, y'all, I mean, so we're, we're all human and we all get in a place where we don't feel like we're good enough sometimes. And that's okay. That's, that's part of being human. Um, it's not a fun place to be, but which is why having a place to vent or reach out and talk to other people is so important. Um, businesses aren't sitting in a boardroom saying, huh, what can I do to really screw with Gabriella today so that she feels like crap that we're not responding to her resume? They're not doing that. They may not be doing things that, that we all think are, are, are healthy or good or a good look for them. But people aren't sitting down trying to really make these decisions to hurt people um, or because it's not about you is the whole end of that point. It, because it is not it has nothing to do with you. you. You'll never know what's going on behind the scenes uh, in, in those boardrooms or with the decision makers. But we understand that it's hard sometimes not to wear it, but let it go. You can't wear it forever. If you have it for a few minutes, man, man that stung. I cried because I really wanted that position. Um, that's okay, but move on because the, it, it's carrying it to the next spot isn't, isn't helping. But again, we all understand. And that's why I, I love what you're doing with the group, Gabriella. So, yeah. um, I just wanted to exemplify that. Well, that's what my profile is all about too. My profile is all about letting job seekers know they're not the only ones dealing with certain things. And that, that just, it just is not a good market right now. It's just not, and it may not be anytime soon. I mean, it's just not, it's not. It, yeah. yeah, agree. So how can, help, how can we help you? Yeah. Um, I am still looking for work. Um, I, you know, a, I have a, a lot of experience in post-sales account management um, and not just the relationship building part, the strategy part. 
um, marketing strategy. Um, I have agency experience, uh, no in-house, but a lot of agency experience working with a range of industries um, from automotive, franchises, e-commerce, um, supplements, attorneys, professional, professional services, um, and then managing the campaigns as well. So I can manage email, oh, Facebook, direct mail campaigns. I have a lot of hands-on knowledge um, in learning new platforms. <laughs> um, so uh, the company that I work for had their own marketing tech, but we did utilize other pro um, platforms as well if the customer wanted to utilize that. So we would integrate in with their platforms. Um, and so if anyone's looking for, you know, post sales, out of New Orleans. Out of <laughs> I am in New Orleans and I am open to hybrid, um, in New Orleans. Otherwise I'm open to remote in the U S. Um, and, you know, customer success, post sales account management, um, as well as, you know, marketing strategy, campaign management. I worked for a very small company, um, two of them at the same time. Um, I can do a lot of things. I can get, hand I'm very good learning hands on. So if it's a plat if you have a platform that I have not utilized or a process that I'm not used to, I do pick up things quickly. I learn things quickly. It's all about drinking from the fire hose and we love drinking from the fire hose. Yes. Amen to that. Uh, I love having the job seekers on I, and yeah. I'm hoping that other people were able to get grab some, understand that you're not alone. Yeah. Yeah. That's everything. I mean, truthfully, that really, that really is. And I, I think, you know, for it, at the core of all of it, that that's what we wanted to do is letting people were not alone, which is why we love what, what you're doing, Gabriella. And, um, you know, and also anybody who knows people that are looking or who to do connections, introductions, uh, that's what LinkedIn is for people is, is to do connections and networking, uh, reach out because again, you never know who somebody else knows, uh, just because you can't maybe do work or don't have a job for Gabriella, you might know somebody, Hey, I, she might be a good fit for you. Um, so just think about it. She might know somebody. It's not the relationship. 100%. I mean, you, you never know and you never know when it can come back. Um, you know, I think your example of the, the company where you, you're still connected with them, but they didn't hire you. You never know what will happen with them. That person could go to another organization and they'll be like, man, because I've done that. <laughs> and I reached out to them afterwards because you, you, that person left a, a, an imprint. And then you want that person because, again, it's not about the skill set. And you never know, you always want to leave a door open um, and then keep an opportunity. You'd never want to burn a bridge. We talk about that all the time, because again, you never know how it can come back and help you. Um, so do you have any final thoughts before, before we, we wrap here today? So next week, we've got a recruiter on. So I figured it would be perfect uh, after the uh, job secret. Let's bring a recruiter on. Now, he is a technical recruiter, so they do a certain type. However, every time we have a recruiter on, I learn something new and oh. I keep on learning. Might have 37 pages full of recruiters I'm connected to, but I love learning from recruiters yeah. because there, there are some really good recruiters out there that really do want job seekers to know that they're not alone. And even if they're not recruiting for you, they're there for you. Yeah. Amen. Okay. All right. Gabriella, do you have any final thoughts, my dear? Um, you know, just to kind of touch on what Christy had said, um, I have a lot of recruiters as connections and even they don't recruit for exactly what I do. Um, they offer, and this is not just like loose connections. I've, I've made very close friends with some recruiters. One specifically, um, he's kind of the LinkedIn, um, <laughs> people think that we actually don't like each other because of the banter that we have back and forth on my posts. Um, Joseph Jewell. Um, <laughs> but he's actually my best friend. Um, and so don't be afraid to connect with someone and build that relationship with someone who, oh, yeah. who, who, who doesn't recruit for what you do um, yeah. because they can be support in ways you didn't think. Um, he has right. absolutely kept me going through since October. Um, I started commenting on his very, very, very sarcastic post. He's never serious. <laughs> um, and then, you know, he offered to help. He, he, he did share my resume with other people um, that he knew. Um, but we've kind of become best friends. So don't, don't, don't only connect with people 
who you can get something from. That's um, right. I agree. Make connections with people who you have things in common with and who you think you could be friends with. Um, your your connections yeah. don't always have to be transactional. Right. Um, and that's where you're going to get your support from. You're going to get your support from the people who's, who, from those connections that aren't transactional connections. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Totally agree. All right. Yeah. I hear, I'm hearing someone's television. Um, <laughs> yeah. So thank you everyone for joining us, Gabriella, for sharing your story and what you're doing uh, so oh, much to me. Great great takeaways for people. Um, <laughs> what is happening? Um, so many great takeaways for people. And again, like Christy said, having a recruiter on next week to kind of follow up in this conversation in a, a different direction will be fantastic. So until next Tuesday at 11 p.m. Eastern time, remember we are all on this journey together and together we really do make it awesome. Have a great day, everyone.